Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. Today is the second in a series of fountain pen giveaways that I will be doing every second Sunday through May to celebrate reaching 5,000 subscribers. And no, I'm not going to tell you in the description, the title, the thumbnail, or this introduction, which fountain pen I'm going to give away. But I'll give you a hint right now. I recently called it the best fountain pen in the world. And it's one of these. Of course, you'll be able to skip forward using the chapters feature of YouTube to find out. But for those of you who are interested more than just the giveaway, I'm going to add another topic to the beginning of these giveaway videos. I promise to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes in how I create a YouTube video review. And that's what we're going to start with right now. For those of you who are interested, this is how I make my YouTube review videos. Like most filmmakers, I don't shoot my video in chronological order. For example, these introductions are always shot last. But while we're here, I might as well show you how this setup is filmed. You guys can see my guitars lined up here, and I have a workspace for working on my guitars or other projects, and of course my computer desk. These introduction shots are just me standing in front of my shelf unit, where I keep many of my pens and inks. I use my LED ceiling lights draped with drafting vellum as diffusion for my front lights, and an LED clamp light as a rim light. Unfortunately, the front facing camera on my iPhone 7 Plus hasn't got the quality to do face on camera videos. But I solved that issue by placing my Nikon D7100 DSLR on a tripod with an iPhone mount so I can use my iPhone as a teleprompter. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I connect my lavalier microphone to the iPhone, so when I get to editing, I can use the audio from the iPhone synced with the video from the Nikon. The beginning of the filming sequence is usually with the unboxing video. When I get a pen in the mail, I'll set up my iPhone on my iRig iClip tripod on my desk, plug in my lavalier microphone and film the unboxing with my iPhone app Filmic Pro. It gives me great control over the white balance, audio levels, focus, and exposure. Plus, it uses the two lenses on the back of my iPhone 7 Plus to give me a smooth, continuous zoom. After the unboxing, I'll write with the pen for a few days to a couple of weeks, and then begin writing the script for the review. I use a template I created so I don't forget to mention the most important information. Once I've created the script, I'll put the document on my iPad second generation, which is in a desk mounted stand so I can use it to read the script while I'm filming. I'll often ad lib through this and add things as I go, but the script keeps me on point. The size comparison videos and the writing sample videos are done with the iPhone 7 Plus on the iRig iClip tripod with the extension and the camera reversed and overhead. This of course requires rotating the video in editing. Once I'm finished filming the scripted review with my iPhone 7 Plus, I'll take photos of the pen sitting on top of my desk to be used as thumbnails and as a background for the measurements. And no, I didn't plagiarize David Parker's thumbnail photos. I copied his whole format and then adjusted it to make it my own, as he himself suggested. Thank you to the viewer for suggesting my channel is just a copycat. Here's a cutaway just for you. I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. You see, if you're very, very stupid, how can you possibly realize that you're very, very stupid? You'd have to be relatively intelligent to realize how stupid you are. There's a, a wonderful bit of research by a guy called David Dunning at Cornell, who's a friend of mine, I'm proud to say who's pointed out that in order to know how good you are at something requires exactly the same skills as it does to be good at that thing in the first place, which means, this is terribly funny, that if you're absolutely no good at something at all, then you lack exactly the skills that you need to know that you're absolutely no good at it. And this explains not just Hollywood, but almost the entirety of Fox News. 
Then I weigh the pen with my digital scale and then measure it with my digital calipers to add the numbers to my video editor. I edit the images using Photoshop where I'll crop and enhance the image, add borders and titles, and save two images, one with a title and one blank. Then I transfer all my videos from the Nikon and the iPhone to my desktop computer. I have a home-built computer with tons of RAM and a very fast solid-state hard drive, a top-notch video card, and a 34-inch curved widescreen monitor. My video editing software is DaVinci Resolve 16. The program is fast, feature-rich, easy to use, and free. I open a template video project where I've saved my audio settings as well as video and audio tracks that I use in every video, like my Vivaldi Four Seasons music and the intro and extra videos. I drag my new video files and image files for the review into the master bin of the editor and save it as a new project. Then it's just a question of adding the files to the tracks in sequence and making cuts and transitions. I will do one editing session where I'll do the first pass, getting the sequences in order and cutting all of my mistakes and pauses, which there are many. Then I will watch through my video again and as cutaways come to my mind, I'll either pull the video files from my archives of cutaways I've done before or search for something on YouTube, my DVD collection, Netflix or Prime. If something strikes me funny and it brings a commercial, a TV show or a film to mind, I'll do the search for the appropriate clip and capture it and cut it into the video. Sometimes I'm unsuccessful in finding the one I want. When I'm finished with the second edit, I'll compile a video which exports to a file I can upload to YouTube. The compilation for a 25 minute video can take up to an hour. Getting YouTube to accept the file can take from a few minutes to a few hours if YouTube rejects five or six seconds of a cutaway or a musical introduction. And if YouTube rejects it, I'll have to re-edit the video, recompile, and then upload it again and try again. The filming in the first edit can take around eight hours for a 25 minute video. The second pass and the subsequent compiling of the video, uploading to YouTube and adding all of the description, the chapter timestamps, and all of the other buttons and checkboxes YouTube requires can take another eight hours. So there you have it. That's how I put a video review together. Yes, it is much easier just to turn on the camera, show a pen, talk about it ad lib for a few minutes, then scribble for a couple of minutes on some paper. But when I started, I had one thought. How do I keep my audience from falling asleep during a long, boring video about something as mundane as a fountain pen review? It's your job to watch for any toys that could be hazardous to children. Now look sharp! Uh, yes, sir! <sighs> And what could be more boring than a fountain pen review video? How about a video about how to make a fountain pen review video? Been there, done that. Now we take you back to your regularly scheduled fountain pen video already in progress. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Welcome back to those of you who watched my How It's Made video. And for those of you who skipped right to the pen giveaway, here's the skill testing question. What software do I use to edit my videos? Haha, <laughs> fooled you. <laughs> the fountain pen giveaway contest rules are simple. Just be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment below. You have 72 hours from when the video is posted to add your comment before I'll randomly select a winner and make an announcement in a pinned comment and on my community page. If a winner doesn't contact me by writing with their name and address within 72 hours of the announcement, I will select another winner. My email address is listed in the description. Of course, I reserve the right to refuse to ship to locations in the world unreachable or cost prohibitive by Canada Post. There's no point in spending hundreds of dollars to give away a $30 pen. And now, finally, to the topic at hand, which pen am I giving away? Well, I did call the Pen BBS 308 the best fountain pen in the world, and for good reason. In my opinion, it is the best fountain pen for the buck on the market. 
watch my best fountain pen in the world video to see my arguments and feel free to give me a thumbs down. I have six of these Pen BBS 308s and which one of these will I give away? Well, we can eliminate this white one first. Isn't that a gorgeous pen? Because this doesn't actually belong to me. This belongs to my wife, Wynn. So we can get rid of that one. And we can eliminate this cedar one because this has special significance to me. It's my first Pen BBS pen and my first Pen BBS 308, of course. Beautiful cedar resin. And also, this one has a cracked section on it. And we can eliminate the amber is a cat because this was my first amber is a cat. And you'll not take this out of my cold, dead hands. Uh, excuse me, is, is this his cold, dead hand? Uh, yes. He, uh, he said I could take this. And the galaxy with gold trim. I cannot give this away because this was my first galaxy. And the finish has since become my favorite. Ooh. The tension mounts were down to the galaxy and the infinite. Well, the galaxy with the silver trim, because I have one with the gold trim, was a gift to me. So, and I don't give away gifts. People are so generous that they give me things. There's no way on earth I'm going to give it away. So we end up with the Galaxy 308 in infinite. This is a gorgeous fountain pen. Let's look at it briefly. It is in this beautiful transparent blue, much like the blue of the Wingsung 699 and the Platinum 3776 Century in Chartres blue. It has gold colored hardware with a matching number six size steel mini Fude nib, which I love so much, are often called Waverly style. And the nib unit can be unscrewed and swapped with other pen BBS units. The number six nib is also fairly standard in size and can be pulled and swapped. Just a note to check on the length of the replacement non pen BBS nib as the cap clearance on the 308 is very limited. The section unscrews and there is a pen BBS cartridge converter, but this pen will also accept Parker short cartridges. It also has a little O-ring right there at the end of the section, so you can get rid of that converter and eyedropper fill this. Just a note to put a little bit of silicone grease on those threads, and it takes a lot of ink. The pen is beautifully balanced in the hand, unposted, and the cap will post and doesn't throw off the balance of the pen. These Pen BBS 308 models are a joy to write with and collect. They have the widest selection of finishes of any pen BBS model. And yes, you have to be vigilant if you want to get one. If you see one you like on Etsy, buy it because they don't last long and sometimes that finish never reappears. And if it doesn't have your particular nib of choice on it, buy it anyway because you can always get these little nib units and replace your nib later. Now let's look at some size comparisons here. Here's the 308 with the Pen BBS 480, a Leonardo Torore, and a Lamy Safari. I don't see them posted. And there they are posted. Now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a short writing sample. Here we are with the Pen BBS 308 Infinite. And it has a fine mini Fude steel nib. And this ink, I cleaned this pen out, so I've just dipped the nib on this, and it is Hiroshizuku. 
Amairo. And the pen is nicely wet. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. This pen is extremely smooth. This is one of the finest Pen BBS nibs I've got. And it has just a slight amount of feedback on the page, but it's just like glass. It is very stiff as it is a steel nib, um, but very, very smooth. And this line is a 0.5 millimeter Western fine Japanese Japanese fine to medium but I tuned this nib myself it didn't require much tuning I will link the description um, I will link in the description the video review I did of this pen uh, but it is just a glorious, glorious pen. And yes, I have six of them in the house, and so I don't mind losing one, but this is a beauty. And this pen um, isn't that expensive either. I bought it for $15.99 US uh, with, uh, I think, six or eight dollars worth of shipping. So to win this pen, simply be a subscriber and leave a comment below. I'll give you a topic to discuss, although any comment is a contest entry. So the question is, what is your favorite turned acrylic on a fountain pen? So perhaps you don't like a turned acrylic, then what is your favorite finish material? Wood, metal, precious resin, what? Get those comments posted and make sure you check to see if you are the winner 72 hours from when the video is posted, when I'll make the announcement in a pinned comment and on my communities tab. Good luck to you all. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.